am Jose Murillo from Banorte, the second largest financial institution in Mexico City, where I am the chief analytic officer. The first uh, project that we undertook for uh, in analytics that was very successful was in uh, uh, reducing the cost of risk. And that's, that was a, a good bet in the sense that it was somewhere where we could have uh, huge uh, results, a huge profits in the short term, easy to measure, and that and that would that uh, yield the, the analytic business unit a high degree of credibility. And uh, we started, uh, after that, we started to move to uh, reducing costs in uh, operational costs, financial costs, and on to the, and to the income generation uh, uh, side, doing uh, cross-sell, upsell uh, strategies that have been very successful. And probably a, a large part of the thing is to be able to measure those concrete results. And, uh, and uh, for that, we, uh, it's easier on the cost side. On the income side, it's, it's a bit more difficult to prove that. And for that, you need to, to apply some techniques like A-B testing or champion challenger, that, that you need to do that, and to have the right uh, the right information on how to measure these uh, extra yields that you're generating, such as customer lifetime value, that uh, how does it changes when, you, when they acquire a new product. At this point, uh, the use of data that we have at Banorte, it's mainly internal data, and uh, we, have, we derive large profits from there, and in some cases, that internal data is enhanced with uh, external data. But at this point, the large profits from uh, the projects that we've undertaken are largely from structured internal data. We are moving to, we're starting, we're working already on projects with unstructured data, mainly internal data. And, uh, and we are also starting to make some uh, experimenting with external data. In the next 24 uh, months that are coming, the way that we do things are certainly going to change. We had, uh, we were able to materialize uh, significant gains from uh, cost cutting strategies or income generation strategies that that, uh, that were huge opportunities. In the, and in the coming months, with the gained credibility that we've uh, earned, we are uh, moving towards implementing more artificial intelligence algorithms to be able to, uh, to drive higher incomes. Also, we are changing uh, the, the type of data that we rely on. We basically relied on internal data. Now we are moving to use internal structured data. Now we are moving to use more uh, non-structured data. The things that gets me early in the morning to wake up and feel the pump it up to, to go to work is that uh, there's a tremendous excitement right now at Panorte because every day we, we have a new idea that, uh, and we have the potential of implementing, have a quick implementation. There's an advantage with, uh, with respect to our peers in the sense that probably our competitors have analytics units, but they are not in Mexico. So we have a, we are, have a velocity of implementation that our uh, competitors don't have. As I said at some point, last year we met ten, by a tenfold our target. So it's, we're not playing anymore for survival or to prove. It's just for the mere enjoyment of doing the things right for, for our customers, for our shareholders, and for the employees that work at Banorte, I guess. Some of the lessons that we've learned 
in setting up the analytics business unit, probably the first one is that, yes, you need uh, to know very well your math. You need to have quantitative expertise. But, and it's also evident that you need to have business knowledge, a profound business knowledge. But there's a, another two legs that are that we fi find that are very important. The first one is that you need uh, to be able to build consensus among different stakeholders. And the second one is that you need to be very good at communicating what are your ideas and what are the results so that a, a firm that is going through a transformative process, they're able to discern among the different things that are going on, what's the analytics con contribution. Another thing, another lesson that I've learned during this course of setting up a, the, the analytics unit, it's that uh, part of it, it's uh, to have the right incentives. In, in a sense that when it's one of these units is set up, you don't want it to, re to have a rivalry with the business that you are supposed to help. So having the right incentives and allocating the, the analytic business unit at the right place, in, ideally at some neutral position within the company, as in my case with the chief operating officer, that proved to be a, a, something that worked really well. The thing that uh, it's the big changer in, uh, in, analytics, in, in an analytics business unit is uh, the, the fact of having the right technology and uh, having access to data. And uh, I guess that's, those are the two main pillars that, uh, that might change things. In our case, and probably that's a struggle that some of the firms might be facing is to have the right, the sponsorship of the C-suite, to have uh, the right incentives, and to have the right people. But once you, you've, you've done that, some of the things that are really hard is that you find a technology that, it's, it, that you know it's the right technology, but its implementation is hard, and you have to get involved. And it's not something that it's, and it's, and also in building the, the data, the EDWs or the data lakes that, that you have, it's, it's not, they are not islands on, it, on itself. IT and data governance are, are two things that need to work very close with, uh, with analytics for, for, for the latter to be successful.